Hey guys, in this lesson, we're going to talk about how to calculate a heart rate on an EKG strip. So I'm going to show you guys three different methods to calculate a heart rate on an EKG strip. So the first method is counting the QRS. Second method is a 300 method. And the last one is the 1500 method. I know that this sounds very complicated, but I promise you it's not. It's really simple. You guys are all going to be pros by the time we get through. It is not that bad. Trust me. So the first method I'm going to show you is called counting the QRS. So on this method, you need to identify the marks above the strip because you want to make sure that you have a six second strip. If you remember, five boxes are one second. So here, one, two, three, four, five here. 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 So from here to here, it is six seconds. So I have a six second strip. So then I count my QRS. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. So I'm going to multiply 7 times 10, and I have a heartbeat of 70 beats per minute. Why 10, you're going to ask? Well, because 6 times 10 equals 60 seconds. And 60 seconds is 1 minute. And I need to get my heart rate per, heart rate per minute. So that's why you multiply this by 10. This method is pretty accurate if you have a six second strip. So always make sure that it is a six second strip and you can identify that by knowing the boxes in between the seconds. This, is, this method is a little bit harder to do when you have a patient with an irregular heart rhythm. And I'll explain that one in a couple slides. Okay, so the second method I'm gonna show you is called the 300 method. Or you can also hear it called the rule of 300. So keep this simple. Make life simple. I promise you it's not that bad. The first thing you do is you pick two QRS. So let's pick this one and this one. So we've selected our two QRS. And now we're going to count the number of large boxes in between the two QRS complex that we have chosen. So one large box, two large boxes, three four. So we have four boxes in between the QRS that we have chosen. So now I'm going to divide 300 divided by four because that's how many boxes I have. And I'm going to get 75 beats per minute. So I know what you're asking. Why 300? Where does that 300 come from? Well, 300 large boxes equals, lar I'm sorry, large boxes equals 60 seconds. And of course, you know that 60 seconds is one minute. That's why you divide it by, or 300 is divided by the number of boxes that you come up with. So this method is a little bit more accurate. If the rhythm is regular, However, the rhythm is irregular. It becomes a little bit harder and um, it's just a little bit more complicated because you're not going to have the same number of boxes in each QRS that you pick. Now, if you guys remember on the slide beforehand, when we counted the QRS and multiplied it by 10, we got a heartbeat of 70 beats per minute. This slide is the exact same slide that was in the previous, um, the exact same EKG strip that was in the previous slide. So counting the QRS is reliable, yes, but this method is a little bit more accurate because you are just getting a little bit more specific, okay? So know that the 300 method is a step above counting the QRS, a little bit more reliable. And then lastly, we have the third method. 
And the third method is called the 1500 method or the 1500 rule. Again, keep it simple. I promise you it's not that bad. So again, just like the other one, you pick two QRX complexes. So we're going to pick these two right here. Instead of counting big boxes, we're going to count the small boxes. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. So I have twenty small boxes. So now what I need to do is fifteen hundred divided by twenty. And I get seventy five beats per minute so once again just like before i know what you're gonna ask me well where the heck did you get that 20 uh, uh, 1500 from well just like the other one there are 1500 small boxes in one uh, in 60 seconds and i know that you guys know 60 seconds is one minute and i need beats per minute so that's why I divide the 1500 method into uh, what, however many number of small boxes I get. Now this method is a little bit more reliable than the 300 method because I'm getting more specific trying to figure out each box. And so you're just a little bit more specific. So just like the other two, if I have a patient who has an irregular heart rhythm, it becomes a little bit more difficult to count your boxes because they're not all going to be the same this may be 20 boxes this may be 23 boxes this may be 20 20 and this may be 30. so of course you're going to come up with different numbers every single time so if you have a patient with an irregular heart rhythm what's the best way to calculate your heart rate how do you do it you check the apical pulse you check it, you auscultate it, you listen, and you count it for a full minute. And that is the best way to know what your patient's uh, actual beats per minute is when you check that apical pulse. You can never go wrong checking your patient's apical pulse when their heartbeat is irregular. Okay, guys, so to recap, these are the key points. These are the main takeaways that you need to understand from this lecture about counting uh, and counting and calculating the heart rate on an EKG. So the first one is counting the QRS. You got to make sure that you are in a six second strip. You multiply times 10 and you have your heart rate or your beats per minute. The second method, so that's the first one. The second method is the 300 method. You count the large boxes in between two QRS. Okay, remember that? It is more accurate. And then however many boxes you get, you um, divide 300 by however many boxes you get. However many large boxes you get. And then the last method is the 300 method. So again, you pick two QRS complex and you count every small box in between and then you divide 1500 by however many num by the number of small boxes this method is most accurate just because it is more specific this is a little less accurate and this is least accurate now honestly most nurses use this one just because it's easier to grab a six second strip and just count the qrs and multiply it by 10. But once again, I cannot stress enough, if you have a patient who has an irregular heart rhythm or when you're in doubt as to what that rhythm is or, or the, what the heart rate is, make sure that you go and you listen to that apical pulse for a whole minute so you can get an accurate rhythm. So I truly hope that this lesson has helped you guys to make sure that you um, understand how to calculate a heart beat. Uh, I'm sorry, how to calculate the heart rate and try to keep it simple. 300, 1500, it really is not as complicated as you 
think what you may have thought of what how complicated it is it really isn't um try to make sure that you guys look at our cheat sheets because there's practice uh, strips in that you can start calculating methods so that you can understand how to do this and get better at that and always make sure that you check out our other resources regarding EKGs. And there's another resource that's really good about just looking at the EKG graph. So I hope that this has helped you. Make sure that you guys go out and be your best selves today. And as always, happy nursing.